Hello good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today I'm bringing you guys the top 5 controversial premium ships list. Now I have assembled what I believe are, I would definitely say 1 and 2 are most definitely the most controversial premiums that World of Warships has ever put out. Now 3, 4, and 5 there could be some argument there but they have certainly caused a fair amount of ruckus upon their presence and their well you'll see as we go on also I am announcing the winner of the tier 8 premium, sh premium ship giveaway I know I said like uh, in the California I think this th yeah there was a California second impressions review that the announcement was gonna come out the next day but it didn't because I had to travel and the California review was actually filmed before Saturday's video so there's a bit of a kerfuffle there but but there's the winner he has won he chose the Graf Zeppelin f as his reward interesting choice uh, I hope do hope you meme in that good sir but enjoy your premium bud and congratulations on winning next big giveaway will be for 15,000 subscribers um, we are actually un well under 2,000 away from that goal so make sure you subscribe so we can get there so we can go ahead and go on with that giveaway. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and write into this list. Again, this is all my opinion. And by no means I'm saying these are the most controversial premiums. Like I said, one and two, probably so. The rest, just my opinion. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So coming in at number five, we have the... Well, uh, it was a tier eight based on a tier four. Now it's a tier ten. The Kitakami. The recently announced tier 10 premium Japanese cruiser. So yeah, this is actually the ship has a lot of history with the game. Um, this ship began life as a tier 8 cruiser based upon the tier 4 Japanese cru uh, cruiser, I believe the Kuma. And its gimmick is that it has 40 torpedoes. Yes, I, yeah, you heard that right. 40 torpedoes if you haven't heard the announcement yet and it's coming back at tier 10 so what's very interesting about the Kitakami is that uh, beyond the 40 torpedoes um, it, it's the only ship to have been completely removed from the game now there are other premiums Missouri for an example or Kronstadt that they have been removed from the game but you know it wasn't like they were removed removed from the game they were moved from the store and they're no, no longer for sale but people still have them obviously and you can still get them in santa containers if you feel like basically gambling at the end of the year with your money but the kitakami just got straight up removed even people already had it they, they were it was junked from their hands and they gave them a an atico in return or an atago however you say it so, yeah, the ship was completely removed from the game, which obviously that's going to rustle some feathers doing that. And what was really interesting is that at Anchors Away at the USS Alabama, someone actually asked about the Kitakami and um, the people there that were representing Wargaming, I think it was Fem and, and some others. Uh, they said that no one needed that power at Tier 8, and they weren't even looking at it, reintroducing it into the game. Now, uh, that was... Not not a year ago, but it was some time ago. Evidently, ever they have reversed that decision. Now the Kitakami is coming back as a tier ten premium, with fifteen kilometer uh, torpedoes, forty of them, and um, yeah, the the pink I'd imagine is the Kitakami's favorite color because good God, forty torpedoes. <sighs> That's a lot of torps. Like that that is and I can imagine when this thing comes out there's gonna be a whole lot of pink Kitakamis legend has it that the Kitakami has more has done more damage to friendlies than to enemy ships so that's uh that's an interesting one that's coming soon to the armory near you now we don't know what um method we're going to go through to get this is going to be another dark yard dockyard event is this going to be a steel ship is this going to be a coal ship I have a pretty good feeling it's either going to be a coal or, or a free XP ship because this, this thing is absolutely just for the memes or just for for the dirt but anyway yeah that's the kid economy that's number five let's go ahead and move on to number four number four is the tier 10 soviet light cruiser smolensk i just all the pain from the ship that the ship has caused me so the smolensk besides the general characteristics of the ship what was very interesting that we found out about it uh, after the smolensk was announced well actually after it was released is that apparently Wargaming during uh, 
I, I think it was, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but I'm assuming it's the same year that the Smolensk came out when they had the CC Summit, they showed the Smolensk to the CCs. And pretty much every CC said that this is bad for the game, this is not what the game needs right now, and this needs to be shelved or reworked extensively before it was released. And according to those that attended, the version of Smolensk that we got was pretty much exactly the same as what they were shown. And they said it was going to wreck the game. And it pretty much did for a while. For the first couple of months that the Smolensk was out, they were absolutely everywhere. It wasn't uncommon to get six in a game, three on one team, three on the enemy team. And six of the same cruiser in one game is pretty extreme. Now, granted, after a ship is, is just released, sure, that's going to happen. But it, it's, it was pretty safe, the small ones, for the first two or three months, and it was absolutely painful. I play a lot at Tier 10. I enjoy Tier 10. I enjoy the power of the ships there. Um, and, God, it, it was... I mean, just go back and watch uh, my videos that I was putting out from that time period. There was a lot of small ones, and, I, yeah, I was complaining about it a lot, because I like playing German battleships, and that's, like, the small ones, favorite favorite target. So that happened, and then of course just the general nature of the small ones too. 16 guns that have a sub 4 second reload with the DPM build, or I think like a 4.5 second reload if you don't go with DPM and go with range. And so she has 16 guns that can reload in about 4 seconds. They can get out to 19 kilometers with Soviet shell ballistics, which means that they're moving pretty fast. They're not hanging in the air for all eternity like American shells. So it's not hard to aim with it. It has a smoke screen. It has hydroacoustic search. So, you know, if a cruiser's hiding in smoke, the thing to do in a battleship would be to charge it, right? Well, you can't do that Do that with a small lens because it has 8-kilometer torpedoes. It's like the little 4-kilometer torpedoes that the um, other Soviet cruisers get. But 8 kilometers. Quite usable torpedoes for a cruiser. Now, if it had the 4-kilometer torpedoes, it would be pretty easy for a battleship to counter it by charging the smoke. If it's a GK, they would have hydroacoustic surge and dealing with it, but you can't do that with a small lens. And at range, you're not going to hit the thing because it's a cruiser. Um, well, Thunderer can because it's Thunderer, but most other battleships couldn't. And it, it was just a pain to deal with. It still is a pain. And plus, the armor on the small lens is so thin that pretty much every battleship, except for like Thunderer HE, is going to overpin it. So if you would catch the thing sitting broadside at 16 kilometers, you'd, you'd shoot it, and you get mostly overpins. Now, if you're an American battleship with their AP, you would have a much better chance of citadeling it. Um, Ohio, I found to be very effective against it because it's 457 millimeter guns and it's slow shell velocity. Oh my god, the, the ship was horrible. Uh, well, the ship's actually quite good, but it's just horrible for those three to four months that it, that it was everywhere. So, what even makes this even more of a controversial slash interesting ship is that they pulled it within 10 months. They pulled it. It was released in August and I think it was uh, pulled in like March, I think like 9.3. It was pulled from the store. Now they're still there, but they're nowhere near as prevalent. Um, but good God, uh, shoo, that's pretty quick for a premium to be pulled from the uh, arsenal, army, whatever you want to call it now. Because, you know, there's some ships in there which have been there for years now. Um, Salem, for example. Uh, John Barr got pulled, too, for some reason. And, well, the reason they gave for both the Small Lens and the John Barr is that they were being too prevalent at Tier 10 and Tier 9 games, so they pulled them. You know, uh, John Barr was there for quite some time, so I kind of understand that. But Small Lens, whew, that was the closest we're probably ever going to get to Wargaming admitting their mistake there with the Small Lens. All right, enough of the small ones. Let's move on to number three, which is the Tier 8 Premium German battleship, the Odin. Now, the Odin is a ship that I myself personally quite like. It's a very good ship. It's a very good German battleship. It's basically a German battleship that has every single German gimmick just bolted to one ship. It has hydroacoustic search. It has torpedoes. Literally, turpets torpedoes, and they're in. They're mounted in the same position as Graf Spee. Uh, these are 5mm guns with decent dispersion, nothing too crazy, but honestly pretty good by the German standards. Uh, German secondary, she actually has one of the longest secondary ranges in the game, the longest at tier 8 for sure, with 116 kilometers max range with a secondary build and flags. And she's a fantastic little boat. Um, she has 
the best armor at tier 8 for any battleship. But uh, the price to pay for all this was having the health pool of a tier 5 battleship. Now, if Odin started out life like that, uh, she probably wouldn't be on this list, but she she, she didn't start life, life out like that. She originally had, I believe it was like 62,000 and change um, hit points. But during testing, Wargaming saw that it was being way too effective. And instead of changing the armor, they slashed her health down to 52,000. Now, uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. In my personal opinion, Odin's fine as is. Would 5,000 more HP make her too overpowered? No, but she would definitely have an advantage because she has an icebreaker bow where, you know, Yami can't pin it. She has a 90 millimeter stern where nothing's going to pin that. Um, and she's got German battleship armor on the rest of her, so she's a very, very tough ship. She's incredibly tough. I've taken some serious punishment with this ship before and come out on top. Now, of course, and for things like fires and random shots that chunky for twelve to 13,000, yes, that hurts more of the Odin, but overall, in my opinion, Odin's a very good ship. So that was upsetting, but then they also decided to release her in the Dockyard, an event that caused uh, quite some stir before. So needless to say, she was quite controversial with the HP nerf and then being released via the Dockyard, we had to grind directives in order to unlock stages of the Dockyard to quote-unquote build the Odin. Although, her Dockyard was much more forgiving Dockyard than uh, the other ship's Dockyard, which we'll get to it in a second. Alright, moving on to number two, we have the Graf Zeppelin, the Tier 8 Premium German Carrier. And the Graf Zeppelin, boy, this was, um, this was about a year and a half into me playing World of Warships. So the Graf Zeppelin, what's controversial about her? You may be asking some of you newer players. Well, um, quite frankly, Wargaming pulled a switcheroo on us. Being that the Graf Zeppelin that was shown, shown to CCs and shown all around the, you know, YouTube, the forums, all that stuff, it was a really good ship. It had like god tier striking abilities with her planes and she had Stukas too. Like actual Stukas, not the whatever the heck they are now they're like actually like s scout planes or something like that um she had she had stuka dive bombers and um pretty good torpedoes and pretty good rocket planes and she looked really good she looked like a really strong carrier with on top of all the neatness of her planes and the god tier striking ability she had german secondaries on a carrier yeah, it looked like the German carriers were going to get German levels of secondary, secondaries. They were very, very, very good secondaries. Then she went live, and some very, very, very last-minute changes were made to her. And the ship that came out utterly sucked. And I don't think the ship was up for uh, two days, and she was pulled. I think it was actually less than 48 hours. Uh, it may have been a little bit more. But I remember she was released. I saw her in the store. I uh, went, okay, I don't play carriers that much, but she looks pretty interesting. I, I might get her when my next paycheck hits. I was still working at a supermarket when uh, when this was happening. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll buy her my next paycheck. And I remember by the time the next paycheck hit my bank account, I went to look. I wasn't even doing YouTube yet at this point, by the way. That That's how long ago this was. Uh, I went to get her in the store. Poof, she was gone. And she did not return till the carrier rework. And her secondaries are really good. The plane part of the aircraft carrier, though, not so much. And she's been uh, it's been a roller coaster with her. She was okay when the CV rework came out, but they made some more changes to the way the dive bombers dived, and then now they're nerfing the AP bombs on her. They did change the. Uh, speed of the aiming reticle or something or another with that. I'm not a CV man. I think they changed the the um, speed at which the uh, AP bombers line up or something like that. They, they dive quicker basically is the simple is a simpleton answer. Okay, all you CV players typing in, com in the comments already. I, I get it. I don't play CV that much, but playing go fast now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that was a huge kerfuffle and probably the biggest kerfuffle until our number one, which everybody who's been on the game for over a year knows is the Puerto Rico the Puerto Rico disaster the PR disaster I don't think I really need to explain this one 
too much, but if you're watching five years from now and the game's still going, the Puerto Rico fiasco, which is by far the biggest stink uh, World of Warships has ever had, was, boy, it was either just insane levels of miscommunication from wargaming or, like, the biggest switcheroo ever. And, boy, the Puerto Rico, well, the ship itself is pretty okay, but we'll get more on that in a second. So the event, basically what it boiled down to was the directives that you had to grind in order to build the Puerto Rico and the dockyard, which Puerto Rico was the first time the dockyard uh, has ever been used. The directives on the test server, which many people have had access to, which is what the CC showed us, they weren't that bad. Some of them were, were some pretty tall orders, but they weren't impossible um, things to do. And, you know, people who have played on the test server, they know that on the test server, things are sped up. Cost of ships don't uh, are cut down. Um, the XP you need to grind is much less than on the vanilla server because the test server is for testing. They want you to get ships, play around with them, test them for, you know, balancing purposes. So, obviously, all that stuff is cut down. Well, the directives in there, like I said, they were much less grindy than the ones we got in-game. Now, I'm sure some people thought, okay, they're probably going to be a little bit harder when they hit the live server, because this is a tier 10 ship after all, but when the Puerto Rico hit the live server, it, the directives were revealed to the public, and they were insane. It basically boiled down to you had to absolutely grind your life away for a month during the holiday season in order to achieve the Puerto Rico. You basically, you literally had to play the game. I think someone crunched the numbers and if you perform like an average player, you have had to play the game for like 20 hours or like 15 hours a day nonstop in order to achieve the Puerto Rico. And needless to say, there is outrage over this. I got caught in the middle of it because, as you guys know, I'm not a CC. I don't get given ships to test. I buy everything because, you know, that's how I got to do things. And I did buy the Puerto Rico to review it in order to, sh to review it for you guys and give my opinion on it and say if it's worth grinding or not. And, oh, my God, I think that's still one of, like, two videos I've put out that have a 50 percent like ratio i think it's like 55 percent liked to like 47 or 48 percent dislike it's somewhere in the in that range because since i wasn't grinding it i didn't look at the directives and i wound up buying the ship without looking at that and that's a whole different story for another time but the outrage was that bad and wargaming's response to to this outrage was even more just it, it was terrible it was terrible PR funnily enough and um, just they dropped the ball so hard it broke the space-time continuum almost with their handling of the event and their responses to it and I won't get into that because that in and of itself could be like a 40 minute video going over everything that Wargaming said. I think I've got like three videos going uh, with all their responses and stuff. And it's not one response uh, in each video. It's like one or two instances of just really questionable stuff that was said by um, Wargaming. And again, if you, you know, th those videos are still up if you want to go look at them, which I would encourage you to because it's pretty good entertainment as to as far as to what was actually said. Um, but yeah, Puerto Rico disaster, biggest kerfuffle in World of Worship's history. Now, granted from this, they did kind of learn at the Odin event because the Odin event's much more doable. It's actually quite easy. It's a walk in the park actually compared to the Puerto Rico event. But, you know, people still didn't like the Odin event. And that's also why Odin was pretty controversial because it's like, oh, they're bringing back the dockyard again. It's Puerto Rico all over again. But Wargaming, to their credit, they did show all the directives beforehand. They released a, a spreadsheet, funnily enough, with all the directives, with it, with it all laid out for the public to see. So I got to give credit where credit's due for that. So they did do that, and the directives were much, much easier. Granted, it was a Tier 8 premium this time, not a Tier 10 premium. But that is it, guys. Those are my top five most controversial premium ships so far. Um, it'll be interesting to see if this list gets added to in the future, or if... I somehow get enough material to do a second one because 
the first the uh, first two on this list were pretty pretty dang bad, but yeah, we shall see what the future holds. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We're on our way to 15,000 subscribers. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful day, and hope to catch you guys in the next one.